Country boy, I love you. Press the start button on the scoreboard to play. this video I'm gonna be doing a basic tutorial of how to solo S rank in Crimson Cauldron. Okay so the first thing that you want to do is for me I'm gonna be showing you the tutorial on the wands. This is the easiest way to get the S rank that you want and if you want me to do a tutorial on any other quests or any other weapons inside of this quest to help you with that, then I don't mind doing it at all. Okay, so what I normally do for a start is I like to break the pods just to be safe. You, pro you probably don't need to, but you do need to destroy the large amounts of pots on certain levels. But it is just safer to break the pots than just in case. But you will most likely be fine. Yeah, and if you're wanting a higher chance of getting it, then you want these enemies to spawn. Because you can get extra points from these ones as well. Because that gives you another, an extra, like, thousand and a bit. So you want to try and focus on killing the guys up top first on this part, and then you can just kill all of these ones over here. If you're also looking for a bit of a faster way to do this um, quest, then I don't mind doing um, some little skips to show you for the quest as well. Or just um, other weapons in the quest. I do not mind doing another take on this and then showing you how to do it. Okay, so after you've done that, you can come over to this part over here and get a quick and easy part on killing these ones as well. And it is also easier to kill them when you go back over here. So, when I'm doing this quest, I do like to come over to this part over here. And just kill them from this distance. And then it's a lot easier to dodge the ones from when you're fighting more of them at the same time. For when you're playing this quest, I recommend you play on seated mode and set your height 
to where is it? Six feet four inches. Just around that kind of height. Because then you are tall enough to not get hit by the green ones on the floor. Yeah, on this part there are a couple runs of enemies. When you're doing quests, I do recommend that you go on to seated mode on the goblin type quest. Because then you can dodge the stuff and get lower for when you're trying to kill the goblins. It just makes the quest a lot more easy to play and I, I just believe it makes it just a lot easier. On this part, you want to go into the corner over here, because then you can get a good start on killing the red ones as well. So, um, normally the kind of area you want to be around is anywhere between 5,500, 50, no, 55,000 here, or 58 to 9,000. So this score is very good for this time, this run, and yeah, you want to carry on through here. Then, what I do on this part of the quest, I like to jump over here, and then shoot onto that barrel over there. Because then you don't shoot the second barrel behind, and you get all the enemies over there. And then you can just shoot the barrel over there, and get rid of those enemies. Okay. So I'm going to show you the safer route this time. And what you want to do is you just want to chuck the potions over there. And then the fourth potion you want to drink. And if you want you can try and throw it over there. And hit one, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so when you kill when you kill the ones that are shooting, then they will spawn in the um, flying ones. So if you want to fight these ones whilst you fight them, then go ahead, but if you're trying to be more safe, then I don't recommend it. But you wanna you wanna make sure that you've killed those elite ones back there. Okay, and then there'll be enemies spawning on both sides on this side and on that side. So you can just jump around the corner and then stay up here. This place is a pretty safe area to kill these enemies over here, because it takes them quite a while to get towards you. And you wanna kill the guy over there. And then, if you just fire a few shots into these guys, then it will spawn another round. There we go. Then you want to drop down here. And kill them. I recommend going into this area, because when you're on the point, ready for the next area, and you do have these here if you need to use them. Okay, so then you just bring one of these in. If you didn't know, um, with the potions, if you drink it, and then go into the next area, then it will refill your drink. I feel like this can be a pretty useful thing to people who don't know this. And then you have the double damage in the next area. For when you're fighting the other enemies. And it makes it a lot quicker for when you're trying to get rid of them. 
You can also use the double damage potion to knock back the things, but I do recommend you just holding a sword on your back. And you want to kill these ones over here. Okay, and then this is the tactic that I use on this section. You don't have to use it, but what I do is I jump onto this tree, then jump back, kill these enemies over here. They can't attack you on this part, if you're wondering. Then, you can just jump around the corner, spawn the flying ones when you walk past the bridge, and then get rid of the other enemies here. And this will spawn only two of these red ones. Even after these two, you get the flying ones. There's two rounds of two flying ones, and they both spawn in this area. You don't have to kill them on the same one. Just try and get for try and get one each time. But it is quicker to get two. And then for this guy, you want to lead him over here. Make him charge and move away, and just hit him on the back with the sword. It normally takes three full taps with the sword, and then you want to try and get those, and then as soon as you see the one over there, then you can just hit that barrel, and it normally kills at least one of them. But you do have to, with the ones, you do have to check the bodies, because they sometimes don't die, so just be very wary of that. Yep, they're dead. Alright, so on this part, what I like to do is to kill those two right there, and then go right to the end and spawn the enemies behind me, and then by that time, I've killed the red ones, and that charger has come towards me as well. Let's go. So when you come here, then it will spawn more enemies behind. But by then, you've most likely killed all of those. So you can just love tap that charger. Kill the rest of these enemies. Okay. And then after you kill these two, it will spawn more enemies. That means there is, if you've only seen one, then that means there's going to be more enemies on the other side. So be careful of that. So I can see that I haven't killed the red one. The second red one. Oh, I must have killed him with that, um, thing there then. That the barrels give you 150 points per, so you don't have to destroy the ones back there, but it's just so that you can get the better score. On this section, you want to be on around 125,000, that'll be fine for when you're doing it. So, as I said, you don't have to destroy the points, destroy the pots, but they do give you points when you destroy them, so it's better to have the extra points than to not. Like, for example, if you're inviting a friend at the end of the quest then it's better to have more points in case they die and lose points for you. Okay, and then on this part, you want to just go over here and kill these ones. You'll know when they're dead, when you either see the points show up, or when you hear them like make the death sound. On this part you want to spawn in these, they're pretty easy to kill with the ones, so I wouldn't worry about it. And then, when you've done that, climb up this wall. And then you can hit them really easily from over here. 
then what you want to do is you want to grab a life yard, a boy even, and you want to try and hit it in around the middle of that area there. A tiny bit off will be fine, but anywhere further than this will be fine for when you're hitting it. And then when you jump there, there's going to be one artillery mortar guy, and then three flyers. Only green flyers though, so you don't have to worry about it. I'm going to go for them first. And then you can normally hit most of them on here. That one fell onto a boy at the back. So I'll just kill him. Okay, so on this part, you can walk up here safe. And then I go over to there. And I spawn the enemies down there. You can shoot these enemies first. And then I shoot the... There's three goblins there. Three tiny goblins spawn there. And you can kill them relatively quickly. After. So slide, hit these ones, hit these ones over here, and you can just... Okay, so what I like to do is I... You can stand over on this part if you want. I'm going to do this as the safer area, because you're going for S rank, you're not going for time on this run. If you want me to do um, a faster run, then I can show you how to. But faster runs are normally done with the bows, because they are faster shooting. So if you want me to show you a tactic on how I use the bows, then I really do not mind that, just type in the comments. Okay, that's probably one of the ones you're going to have a, have a trouble with, that one there. So, on this section, the mortar either spawns there, or there. I know there's a first one there, but a second one can spawn there. If it spawns on that side, it won't spawn on that side, vice versa. But yeah. That can be a trouble because you don't know which side it's going to spawn on. But I figured out that normally when you're on this side, then it'll spawn on the other side. And when you're on the other side, it'll spawn on that side, vice versa. Okay. Okay, so, on that part, on that part, I don't know why I didn't do it, but normally what I do is I come round here, and then I go this forward, this far, without killing any of them, and then I go into this area over here, and then I kill these ones over here, the flying ones that shoot the projectiles, and then that's when the red elite flyers spawn over there, and you just shoot down there, and then you're normally fine with them. Okay, but... I'm sorry, but I don't want to do this again. <laughs> so, what I like to do on this part is to grab a bow. You can go into another area, but I do like to go onto this part, because it's quite easy to do it. You just need to be relatively fast at shooting. On these ones, you can just strafe from their shots. It's not very difficult to dodge them. You can, you can probably do it with a uh, wand, but it will just take a lot longer. You just, like, okay, I'll show you what to do. All you want to do is just go to the very back of here, and then just strafe. And you want to just try and dodge the bullets that the bog monster is shooting at you. Okay, and then on this part... You can just, there it, the steam does spawn there, but you can just walk past it. Then you want to walk through here, and to the left. 
kill this one here. And then you want to shoot at those mortars. Make sure that they are all dead, by the way. Because they can be annoying. Remember, the reason why I didn't die there is because I am taller than the green ones. That's why I, again, recommend that you put it on that height. Okay, and then what you want to do here is you want to kill these ones. You can just stand back for this part. It's not very hard to dodge them. Then you want to try and shoot the one at the back, over there, and then spawn that one, make that one come towards you. Then you can just kill this one here. After you kill him, they should spawn right here, and over there. Then after you kill the next wave, there'll be should be two shielders and a couple of those. Yep. And then there's no more enemies in this part until you go into the next area. So when you go into that area over there, basically past that big pipe, um, what will happen is there's going to be around I think three or four elite like sword sword goblins and then if you just stay here and fight them it is a lot easier to kill them because you're not worrying as much about them but just keep on watching into that hallway because that is where they normally come from and just watch your six on this part because there are quite a lot of flyers in this next step um, section But they only spawn in those two parts there. You don't have to worry about them spawning anywhere else. But they do come down the hallway, so be careful of that. Then after, after this part, there is going to be two elite flyers that spawn. They both do normally spawn either both down that way or both down that way. But you can kill them reasonably easily. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to try and get these two elite ones to try and come at the same time down this area. And once you've done that, you can just climb up here and kill both of them. Both of them are dead. Then there's another wave back here. That you've got to kill. It just takes them a while to spawn. Unless there isn't. What the hell? There isn't, apparently. <laughs> I must have killed them in that last part. Alright, and then you can just go back up here if you haven't. So, a thing that you can do as well is you can lure the first um, charges up here and then blow them up. <laughs> Bless me. With that barrel. Just like that. Or you can lead them. You can go over here and go like that. From this part, you want to go straight down here, take a right down there, and then slide around here, and then you get a perfect timing missing away from that steam there. You want to be careful of that. And then on this part, you want to aim right down there, and shoot that barrel over there. It might take a couple tries, but you normally get most of them dead, if not on the first try. You normally want to aim from the hip like that, 
but I was just aiming a different way to give you more perspective. Oh, and then you can just walk past them. Be careful on that part because a lot of people do die on that area. But what you want to do is just shoot that guy first. And then you want to stand up here and shoot both of them. And then when you've done that, just come over to here. Wait for them to both come over here. They can't hit you through the thing, I just always get scared of them. So don't worry about that. And then you want to jump down here. Kill these fellas. And then bomb those two red ones that spawn. When you're on my height at 6-4 and you're trying to kill those red ones, then I recommend that you jump right at right when they're coming towards you because then you can dodge them like most of the time. Okay, then what you want to do is you want to wait for them to come over to there and just blow up that charged one. Finish off him. Bomb that. Kill these elite ones. And after this, just kill the morph down there, because he can kill you sometimes. And then kill that one. Right there. Boom. And then, I like to stand up here do it because you can kill that first one and then kill that second one over there and then just come over here and get that one done on this part you can just blow up that first one over there with that and then just dodge most of the shots to be fair it isn't that hard to kill them the only ones you have to worry about are the elite ones so you want to get rid of those ones first And then after you kill these flyers, then it will spawn another wave of the green goblins, the floor goblins. Then after you kill a certain number of waves of these floor goblins, then it will spawn those right there. That is why you're saving those barrels. Because you can get rid of all of these in one go, as soon as that last one comes into the area. And just kill those, and just fire down here aimless aimlessly, you don't have to have any sense, just make sure you're dodging the bullets that they shoot. Just go to the end over here. Yeah, 168, 165, anything just around that is okay for this level. And on this part, what you want to do is you want to kill these first two green ones, then kill the red one, then kill these ones over here. Then around that time, these two red ones should be on the stairs, ready to kill them. And then on this part, you can jump off the side and shoot that barrel, but I like to just go to the very top over here. Jump around this barrel, and then just shoot that barrel there. Okay, so the way that this wave works is that when you kill two-thirds of the enemies down on that floor, then it will spawn the enemies up here. You see, I killed two of them. Well, three, because that's two-thirds of this area. And it will spawn them. But then you want to save that barrel up there for when you finish this part of the wave. And you can just 
I messed up that barrel, obviously, but you get what I mean. But you want to be very careful with that because it can mess you up quite a bit if you weren't playing at a reasonably good level. Okay. At this part, you just want to be above 290,000 and then you'll be fine, to be fair. On this part, I normally... I would normally switch to a bow, as it can be quite awkward doing it with that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drop these ones over here. Actually, I'm going to put one on my back, and I'm just going to put this one here. So, I'm going to show you a tactic with the swords that you can use on this boss, called the double sword technique. So what you want to do is you're just going to go right up towards him, and just do that. I mean, you can basically insta-kill the boss, and it saves a lot of time, and you can sometimes die if you do it the other way, because it can, like, glitch out, or your sword can just, like, go weird. But then, all you want to do is just kill these fellas up here, and if you're going for an S rank, then you don't want to hit the witch boss until you're done with the rest of the enemies on the round. You can quite easily dodge the witch, just want to be watching him a bit, and just keep on moving. And then after you've killed those enemies, you can just grab some more swords, walk up to the witch fella. It is a bit hard to do that double thing, because he doesn't stand still, but do it reasonably easier of a way. So when you're done with this part, you just want to again get rid of the mortars first. You don't have to worry about them, they don't normally hit you. And you can easily dodge them again either way. If you didn't know, you can just block their bullets with anything, with a wand, with, I don't know, a bow, a sword, but you can only hit it back with a sword, so you want to make sure you have swords. want to be careful of them because they can kill you quite easily and you want to try and kill all of these because then if you are inviting a friend then you can just invite them on the part so you want to block one of them and then you want to just go up there and just spam hit the that he drops and then there you have it so that is my quick and easy tutorial on how to solo s rank in crimson cauldron so now i'm gonna just quickly tell you the ranks that you'll get for the quest so the main ones that i do know is that s rank is anything above 300 000, um points 300 000 gold and then for um, A rank, you want anything between 275,000 and 300,000. So minimum you would need is 275,000. The max you would need is like 299950. Just 299950. That's the max you can get from that. Or probably higher. I don't know. But yeah. Um, and then for B rank, you want between seven to fifty thousand and two seventy five thousand. And then C rank is anything below two hundred and fifty thousand. And then you get C rank. That's if you're playing like trios, duos, so on, so on. But yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video, 
and that was just a quick tutorial on how to solo crimson.